right, today hi, welcome. I know it's not the best view, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the entire play-by-play -play of, uh, I got them sewed up now, so, uh, uh, but uh, the boarding process of uh, putting the beaver on the, uh, beaver, sorry, the otter on the board. And I've got the, got the uh, needle of shame. I really can't tell what kind of lighting I'm getting here. Probably not so good. This camera is usually pretty dark and it's getting darker out and the lights in here are just 40 watt light bulbs. But once again, we'll have a look at the needle of shame. It came through. It did what it had to do and uh, is what it is. So hopefully I don't ever have to do that again. He was very difficult to, to uh, sew on the lower end here because of uh, all the cartilage and everything. But he wasn't so bad up top. He wasn't so bad up top. But anyway, I got the brush now. So I don't know if you guys can see very well. But I'm just going to give him one brush out. Before you board your otter or any any animal whatsoever, uh, just give him a, a quick brush down in case there's any meatlets or anything like that in there. But most importantly, make sure he is completely 100% dry. So anyway, yeah, that's going to cost me. Okay, so... The uh, the holes I put in them, uh, that's what happens when you try to board an animal or flesh an animal that's not fully thought out. So what I'm going to do is get my trap boards here. And he is fully dried out. And again, he's, a, he's, a, he's still considered a medium otter. He's one of the larger medium otters, but he's still a medium otter. And uh, hopefully you guys can see well. All uh, right, what we're going to do is try and not to agitate the holes where I sewed. I'm going to flip them inside out one more time, and this will be the last time. I flushed them good yesterday, so that was good. The upper uh, area where I sewed, actually not too bad. This, I think the first time I've ever sewn an otter pelt, and i got to say, I was surprised how tough it was. Well, I'm surprised and I'm not surprised. Surprised because it was like, wow, that's pretty tough, but... Considering how hard they are to skin, you, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, okay, well, again, I put a hole in them with a pretty sharp knife. The fleshing knife was pretty sharp, so I'm going to put my good otter board aside, and I'm going to grab my B otter board, my B stock. This, basically, otter board is, uh, it's, uh, I made it myself. I make a lot of them myself. It does the job. And uh, I thought my concept on this one was quick drying. See the... Oh yeah, there's one thing. One step I really forgot in the last otter, and I just remembered it right now. <laughs> oh boy, when that other otter dries, I hope I'm gonna be able to get him off there. <laughs> uh, I forgot to stick up the center. I knew I knew he forgot something. But anyway, there's where he's he's dried. So will this one, this board be long enough for him? No, nope, might not be long enough for him. So I guess I'll have to use the other one. Nope, not long enough. So uh, I'm not gonna use that board. So this board is out of the question. I thought I had other otter boards in there. This is why you got to keep making boards as you go because uh, if you don't, you're going to run out of boards. And, uh, uh, try. Yeah, it's too wide on the head. So anyway, I'll get him on here. That was the yeah, that's why I remember why I didn't like that. that that's okay for the small uh for the extremely large large that's why I had to made it. I, I I I made that board was because our otter that was captured was like really really large. So the sewing job there is not the greatest, but I'll try to trim this up once he dries a little bit. Big thing is to get him straight on there. So you want to get him as straight as possible so that uh yeah, see, I, don't be, I might get, oh, I might get lucky on that one. I think I'll get lucky on both. Yeah, the big side gash here, I won't be as lucky on that one, but the other one, not too bad. So I get his legs kind of where they got to go. And, uh, yeah, I just realized that on my other auto, I forgot to put the stick up the center. And, uh, yeah, that's going to make it very, very tough to take them off. Oh, well. Uh, not impossible. There is there is a trick you can do to get them off, but uh, when you 
forget to do that, you'll understand why you normally do it. It makes life easy. Uh, some people use a, what they call a split board setup. I've never used a split board setup. Uh, what happens is that they get really stuck around the head. It's just like, because this thing gets as hard as cement almost, right? So when it dries, so it will shrink up quite a bit. So get this in. I usually put two in the snout here, two little thumb packs in the snout, just to kind of hold them into one spot. Sometimes it works, sometimes it bites you. There. I need the other one in there. I just put two in there just to hold them. We'll deal with the legs in a moment. Check out the tail. Check out all that. So, what the heck is going on here? Okay. I think I gotta deal with that. <laughs> there we go. It's just one of those things where it's just like a piece of cobweb. It's just it's getting in the way of everything, getting on everything. Okay, so I'm gonna get them. Again, you don't pull them too tight. You just let them kind of like rest on there. In fact, I probably could go up one side. Is it says I need to follow this board. Maybe I'll have to go up one side. Maybe he's a large. He's a large. Well, that's kind of good news. Sort of. No, I'm going to stick with that. Now, if you overstretch your otter uh, or any animal, can I get the tail forward? Yeah, he's just borderline medium large. But I'm going to leave him here because of the cuts. If I can get the, if it allows me to get the cuts around his belly a bit more. I'll be a bit happier with that because then it might not. But then again, he's a large. So, <laughs> all right. So, yeah, he's a large. He's not a. He's not a medium. I thought he was a medium. So this one will not do. So I'm gonna go to my next board up. Uh, which is there? It is right there. That's the one I'm looking for. Um, I still didn't do my inventory of boards for you to see what I what I got. Yeah, large dog. I should trace this guy out before I put him on there because my here's what will happen. I'll catch an otter about four times this size. Yes, this is my large otter board. That's right. Yeah, I made this one. Yeah, this looks like something I made. So a couple of years ago, I went crazy and. Uh, just started making boards in the off season like you should you know and, and stuff like that and i just like okay yeah i'm just gonna get it all done and i ended up making uh, i think a size for every animal in my area so i i think i did well on that but it's like i think i only have the one like this is like large extra large otters and i think this is the only board i have and i only traced out the, the mediums but i mainly catch medium otters most people do I want to go gentle because oh yeah that's a better much better but much 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 better oh yeah trying to get so I'm not agitating where I sewed sewed them up oh yeah that's 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 where this is where it belongs it belongs on this one so lengthwise he's like a medium but uh He's definitely a large. He's a big otter. That makes me happy. But what doesn't make me happy is that. That. Up there. It's like, eh. I hope it's not going to cost me as much as I think it's going to cost me. But three three big cuts in there. I mean, that's that's a lot. That is a lot. Oh, I might have to cut this. Oh, yeah, I got to cut that. I can't. I can't like that. I'm a professional, damn it. Um, all right, so... But this is the process. A uh, good idea, again, keep your, uh, what you call it, uh, gunk rag on hand because uh, he's going to get really greasy when you're inside when it's warm like this. Now, if he's a little bit frozen when you're putting him on, it's not as big as a deal. As long as you can, you can get him on there sitting where he needs to be. Um, but if, if you can't get him 
centered. Make sure he's as centered as possible. If you can't get him centered uh, on the top, you'll, you'll have a hard time getting him centered on the tail. Because you, you don't want to twist him in any way. You want him to be as, even if you have to kind of work your way down uh, the, the whole the whole board. So he's a large. That's why it's so hard to get get everything into him. He's like he's like he's he's thick. He's mm, difficult. He's he's not being very nice to me. He's having a hard time getting that in there. Ah, dropping everything. These little thumbtacks. You can buy them. I think I get them for like a buck ninety nine at the dollar store or whatever. Uh, they, they work wonders. Uh, there. There you go. Let's see if I break my board. That didn't even go through. What, what's going on here? I think there's. I just can't seem to get there. Well, maybe he might be okay. The idea is so that it, the lip doesn't come up over as it dries. So that it'll dry a bit before it gets a chance to do that. There we go. And of course these boards are made out of poplar, my first mistake. Uh, poplar's really, when it dries, it's like steel. Everything about this auger is gonna fight me. I just the hick out of it. And I, uh, Okay, so I got one in there. Okay, so now let's get him. Let's start boarding this guy up. Let's get let's get him good. And note to self. Get the, in the other one, don't forget. Oh that that one. When I bring him, I'm gonna bring bringing him in probably tomorrow. So hopefully hopefully the goal will be to uh no, that's that's not gonna be too bad. So I got one cut on the on the bottom side. Most of the really bad cuts on this side. Yeah. I don't want to ever do that again. Legs look good. That sewn up doesn't look that bad. Um, and you're going to constantly be preening them and, and, and you know, until they get them nice and... Did a nice job on the tail. I gotta say that. Yeah. Now... I swear to God, I swear to God... 10 times the amount of tax it got. It seems like you will go through these tax rules quickly. So I usually, it doesn't really matter where you start. You can, you know, whatever's best for you. But I usually try to get them where he's most centered. And then I stick a tack on one side. And then what I do is I make sure the other side's pretty much dead even. And then this is just kind of like his stapling. And I don't over over stretch it. Never, never force them if you can help it, because you you want the 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 uh, to stay as. <sighs> don't ever use poplar again. Uh, you want the, the pelt to stay as even as possible, but also to stay as dense as possible, because if you if you think you're going to get more money money by stretching them. You'll get less money because you're gonna thin out the fur, and uh, this is why you don't put holes in them, and then uh, stuff like that. So you just work your way in. Oh. You gonna fight me every single ounce of the way, really? You gonna be like that to me? But anyway, it's a hard process. But again, there are easier ways to make a living. But. Uh, can imagine he would actually fill, fe, uh, an order this size would actually fetch me probably really good money if I didn't put a hole in him, a couple holes in him. Now, how tight you go on the tail uh, with the pins is up to you. Some people might put them every inch, some people every half inch. The more you put in, the nicer and more uniform it looks. Presentation sometimes will get you more money at auction 
simply due to the fact that people think because it's present its presentation is nicer that they think it's better and they will bid more so this little stuff that I'm doing sewing up the holes and stuff like that counts and remember those holes are gonna get really big even after sewing them up they're probably gonna get big again so as I'm doing this where's all the rest of my pins I've got more than that I know I got more than that um, so I'm gonna keep again try to get them as even as possible get them in there good because as it dries it'll, it'll try to pop them out like that and then you won't have a, a uniform oh my god that one this poplar board is just so that's not good now it bent it uh, then you work your way down a bit slow but sure i've got more of these somewhere i, I hope i have a whole 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 bunch of them here <laughs> a brand new one there's 80 in there so <laughs> okay i don't think i'll use 80 on here but uh you'll probably use about 25 30 maybe 40 of them all right come on it's still broke just everything else curse you are well I did kill him I guess it's his revenge so he's probably laughing at me saying yeah this is what you get for killing me you bastard and putting holes in my uh, oh new and fresh I'm gonna yeah these ones are good oh look at that okay maybe if I get too gung-ho center my tail same thing stretch out your tail so it's nice uh, and center Pine. I like pine. Pine boards are not this uh, not this far hard to, to fight with. Yeah. And I work, oh, work my way down on the tail. Because he's a bigger one, I'm gonna do a little more with him. I'm probably gonna go about every half inch. Uh some people like I say they go like really, really They go like really crazy with it and it's just like yeah but that's up to you my logic is the more make sure your tails obviously spread out well because the more it's spread out um, the uh, better it's going to dry but don't spread it so like again, uh, like like right here, like you could, I could feel the density of fur underneath because it's just it's as it dries it, it's gonna, you know, be pretty good. And the other thing is, the more you use, if one tack lets go, at least it, it still stays uniform because the rest are holding it in. Some tacks will go in really easy. Some tacks will fight you the entire way. Remember, Otter's Revenge. Otter's Revenge. Like you killed me, I'm going to make sure it's hard for you. Now, the other thing as you're doing this is every time you handle the pelt, you squish out grease and oil. So, again, don't get too far ahead of yourself. And just monitor how you're going with the tail. You know, line everything straight and everything like that. Make sure everything's in there. And tail starts getting a little bit on the greasy side by a little I mean a lot just do that okay so I'll keep going now a beaver will probably use a hundred of these uh, easy depending on the size of the beaver bigger the beaver more the so I'm putting about every inch -ish. Every inch or so, maybe even every half inch is okay. I mean, you just get the preliminaries in them and then go over and refine it after if you want. 
Again, the idea is for a nice, even presentation on the field. So thumbtacks are definitely the easier way to go on pine boards, on poplar boards. The poplar dries out, it gets as hard as steel almost. So still looks good. Make sure you got them pinned well enough that uh, when it dries, it doesn't just pull the pin, you know, the, the, the flesh around the pin, whatever. It needs to be holding them, so get them on. You know, like uh, you don't want you want to you don't want them on the tail too much, but you also, like I say, you want to make sure you got it hold a good hold with your. So, ow. what I'll do with my GoPro is one, once he's uh, once my GoPro's charged up or whatever, I'll I, I'll give you a nice kind of play by play of what I did and we'll have a better look at them. You know, look at this embarrassment that I got going on here. See, it's still not clear. I might have to sew it up even a bit more. Oh boy. Don't ever do that again. Especially a guy that that's you know or I mean mind you this is the second order I've done. It's a long time. Or whatever. But still not an excuse. Not an excuse. A little hard on the fingers. Won't bite you. <laughs> make sure they're in there. Yeah, just make sure they're in there. Yeah, they're they're on the other end of the tail. So, like I say, some of them go in really easy, and some of them don't. So, I know you really gotta fight. Now, to make your own boards, okay. Uh, you have to understand, this is like a hundred dollar board uh, to buy. So, uh, if you got access to make your own, make your own. It doesn't take much to make them. So, the tail part's almost done. So you can see there's a, there's a bit of work to this. Uh, this is usually the final stage, but. Again, turn this one. <laughs> so we got any, anything in it. And mind you, I wasn't really well set up this year. Uh, so I should have all this stuff all settled right. But now, now I can catch my really super big otter because I got this board taken up. That, that's kind of, uh, maybe I'll stick one there, an extra one there. Yeah, if it looks like you got a, a gap or whatever that could use an extra one, put it in. There we go. So you can see how I got that done. Put a few around here. But here I don't worry about too much. It's more on the sides that they're in good. So now I can flip them over. Uh, before I do, sorry, give that grease a wipe. Because it's going to start running off the tail, right? And once that starts happening, that's when you run into problems. So well, I've got a little more to sew up here. So I thought I had it good, but I guess I didn't. But on this side, what we do is we just take, we're going to be cutting a whole section out right here. That there's not too bad. Uh, we'll do, we're going to get this guy to kind of center it. Put one there. Now on this side, you will have to put some too, so. And then, we'll grab this here. And again, for presentation, keep the base as even as you can. Now I'm going to cut that out. 
So hopefully these scissors will do it. So you see I got a pin there, pin there for now, and I'll finish up the rest of these. Maybe I'll do that now before I cut anything. And uh, When uh, you go to send them the fur trade after you take all this off, you can take a, a knife or whatever and just trim it, all that rolled up stuff. That's when it when it dries. Is you can trim all that away too. Uh, maybe one more there. And, uh, bam. We'll monitor it. Sure those side ones are in really good. Now, to make the inspection window. I'm just gonna it doesn't have to be too big, but it's gonna go up around where the uh, the daddy button was. And uh, maybe not the ideal knife, but or scissors. I find scissors kind of a bit even, or even easier than uh, knives sometimes. And then I believe that. Yeah, I also got to do the wigs. Clear out all this stuff. Some people make a, a trace, a trace out uh, thing to do. I just kind of eyeball it. Get yourself some good scissors if you're going to use scissors or a really good knife. But this is all the baggy stuff anyway, so it's like a, uh, you'll get away with this exacto knife. So as long as it's an even, even, I mean, watch your fingers. First dull in the, the scissors as I speak. Not too bad. I'll throw this out. Since we're up there for now. I'll do that. I have a few more pins. We can't leave this uh, one pin. I'm gonna just wrap them over again. There we go. Well, that's not too bad. Not too bad. I'm gonna put another pin here. That's not too bad. This is horrible. That's horrible. I don't know what to do with that. I thought I sewed it up enough, but. Oh, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. I can stuff that on the other side. Well, I don't want to do that too much because I don't want to get the, the fur on the other side. Then, you have a stick like this. You notice it's kind of slightly tapered. You can kind of see. And we're going to go up the belly plate hole. You can see the hole now. And uh, I'm just going to be nice, gentle. Make sure whatever you use. And come right out his mouth, the top of his mouth. So you see what we're doing here. So whenever we go to harvest, you get it kind of straight, it'll make it look better anyway. Uh, whenever this dries, okay, and it will dry fairly quick. That's why I'm fighting with them now because I, you know, the sooner you get these guys done, the better. I have to cut off the bottom lip.
this stuff is done. Grease foil. Now, my legs. What I'm going to do for the legs is you're going to obviously store the legs on the uh, inside of the pellet during the drying process, and then you're going to flip them over later on. Now, I've got a piece of a very special piece of pellet here somewhere. Right here. And i got a very, very special piece of scissors somewhere. Right here. What I'm going to do now with the legs, I'm just going to make some cardboard inserts. Not to be very big, just enough. Oh, to be small. Scissors like this. Screw the scissors, man. Grab a knife. And make this a good one. Again, you don't want to over stretch anything at all, it doesn't matter what part it is. Let's move it on the big side because you're supposed to feel big on it. Uh, so, before you stick, so, uh, people have different methods of doing that. There's even the old tying method. This, this, this one's just a little bit too big. I'm just going to kind of reshape it. The idea is so you can turn the leg inside and not a leg big. That is the idea. So, nice and gently in. And then make sure you try to pull it back a bit. Okay. And, uh, make sure you got a leg in there. And go in far enough that it Allows it to uh, move, move, move. Hmm. I know what I'm going to do with that. When uh, sewing doesn't work, pin it. This side's okay, but this side, it was just too much of a gash. The uh, threads aren't holding it. I'm just going to pin it like this so it dries like that. You know what? We'll Mistake I made. That's look okay. Holy jeez. Can you imagine being this clever and this handsome at the same time? It's just, it's just yeah. Okay. All right. That's how we bandage our our our, our whole machine there. Okay, so that last one was a little bit on the big side. This one, ah, I don't know. Yeah. I'll grow a little bit less. As long as they're fairly even. There you go. And, and, and. Done. Okay. Like that, like that, like that. And then, right here. Then, nice and gentle. Again, we're always handling the fur fairly, fairly well. Uh, it's, it's not too badly fleshed. I could have done a little bit better on them, but I can always demoralize when I put the hole in them. But what do you do? What do you do? Still, give it. Put, treat it as if you didn't put a hole in it. You know what I mean? Now that said, if this guy was prime. Uh, which he's not quite prime, he's not fully prime, and at this size, he's technically a medium slash large. Make sure that I'm going to use this and some. There we go. Get those legs out. Get those legs out. Get those out a bit. And there we go. We have a otter pinned. 
boarded, ready to go. We got the uh, removal stick. When he dries, this is what's going to happen is that we pull the stick out and he's going to uh, basically be uh, easier to remove off the board. If not, it's going to get so hard around there, it's going to be next to impossible to. Now, when we store our otters or any fur, two things, nose down, okay? And if you want, put the, the, the tail, like if it's leaning, Lean it with the tail towards the wall. That way, if there is any grease running, it'll run down his backside and not onto the uh, onto the pelt. Then we'll put him outside. He is quite stinky, which is to be expected from a dead otter. Um, but yeah, so he's borderline large. He's not extra large. Uh, tip the tail. Oh, well. It's almost five feet long, I guess. Four and a half feet, five feet long. So <laughs> he's a big otter, you know, he's a big otter. I know it's not the best camera angle and all that, and I wanted to do this all with the GoPro, but I ran out of uh, battery time today. So this is what we got all done. Again, if you need to throw in a few extra tacks, throw in a few extra tacks, uh, sew them up, tack them. <laughs> Don't, yeah, whatever you got to do. Okay, get that off, get, get that off, so icky stuff, and that's not a bad order, that's number two, but three holes in them, one, two, and three, oh, that is shameful, but I did not let him fully thaw when I started to flush him, and that's what it's going to cost me, that said, give him a couple of weeks there, he's going to look really good, and when I reflip him back over, ooh, Great drop in him. When I flip him back over, he's gonna he's gonna look really, really good. I could see the bruise here where the trap hit him. And where's the second one? The second one's up here or whatever. Yeah, that's where there's a little micro hole, but that's probably from the trigger. That's probably what happened there. I don't know, tiny ain't nothing to do about that one. That or yeah, yeah, because I can see the bruise here. once he starts to dry, you'll see the the the, the the bruise mark where the the, the corner bear hit him don't worry about that it will devalue the pelt in any way it's okay uh all right so i'm gonna get him outside and uh, there we go how long did that take me so this otter i don't have as much time in well i probably got more time into him now 37 minutes roughly plus the sewing so i got about an hour or so took me an hour and 50 to uh skin him which was a little faster than the other one. The other one was two and a half hours. Again, getting back into the next order won't take me as long either. Uh, hour 50 to skin them. Roughly two goes out of roughly about an hour. So an hour 50. So two hours 50. So three, what do I say? We'll say about three, almost four hours into them. So I've cut down about two and a half hours off of this order from the experience of the last one. If I did have to sew them, it would have caught, uh, be an extra 15 minutes less or 20 minutes less or whatever. Yeah, so mistakes cost you time, but they also cost you money. Uh, but here, I'm just going to, well, I'll show it better in the, in the other one. You see what I did where I sewed it up, but you see it still wants to pull open. So I just, uh, the, the pins will hold it there for sure until it dries. Um, I will trim off all this fur later on. Uh, I don't want to push that fur on the other side because it's probably all full of grease and everything anyway, and I don't want that grease getting onto the inside of the belt. Again, before you board your otter, make sure he's 100% dry, uh, the, the fur, because if he's not, it will rot on the inside or mat or whatever, and it will destroy the fur. So you don't want to do that. So you can see a nice uniform the whole way down. This will be, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get him again on the GoPro, and... Uh, I'm going to bring out that other stick, <laughs> so jam him in my other otter, because I forgot that step, and if the, the, you'll, you'll make that mistake once, uh, because when you go to take the otter off the board, he's going to be solid as a rock on there, and you will have a hard time getting him off if you can't uh, kind of pull the stick out and then flatten, <laughs> loosen him up a bit, so I learned that the hard way the first year, um, yeah. And it's something that it's it's a common mistake people make. They just forget about. It. So anyway, there I'm gonna get him outside, and uh, there we go. That's order number two.